Welcome to episode number two of the Tribecast here at Mississippi Wall High School. I'm one of your hosts, uh, Derek Gowan. Uh, I'm Zaire Fickler. Uh, and I'm Peyton Lewis. And we are here with our guest number two, uh, the Mama Pearson, uh, Miss Amy, Mrs. Amy Pearson from Mama Pearson Soporium. Thanks for joining us. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to have you on here. So let's just get going with a uh, quick background. I know we were talking a little bit beforehand, but just tell us kind of where you where you're born, where you grew up and all the basic kind of information background stuff. OK, well, I was born in Indianapolis when I was two years old. My family is all from Grant County, so my parents moved back to Grant County and I was raised in Marion and uh, never really left except for five years. We, my husband and I moved to Warsaw when my firstborn son, Quentin, was just 10 months old. We moved to Warsaw, lived there for five years, and then we came back, and that's the story. Yeah, there's something about Grand County. It always just pulls you back, doesn't it? So It does. It's a great place to raise a family. Now, uh, after living here for so long, what would you see as a big advantage of living here versus like a bigger city, maybe with more people? Yeah, so as a small business owner, uh, I feel like living in a small town, especially Gas City, where my business is a unique business. It's the soap business. And so it, it's very well supported by a small community. You would think if moving to a big city... Indianapolis, Fishers, Noblesville, I feel like I would just get kind of lost in the background. There's yeah. much more competition. Uh, rent or property is way more expensive. So I say the best place to start a business is, is, is in a small community like Gas City. Wow, that's that's really great. Um, but like, do you like what pushed you to open your own business? What pushed me to open my own business was when I started having children, I was an older mother when I started having children. I was 34 when my first son was born. I have three sons, Quentin, Truman, and Lennon. And I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. So, But I still wanted to make income because I didn't want to have to ask my husband if I wanted a pair of shoes. I didn't want to <laughs> say, can I have these shoes? I wanted to go out and buy my own shoes. So I was very independent like that. I've worked since I was 15 years old. Always had a job or two jobs. Uh, I... I, but when I started having children, I wanted to stay home with them, so I started working out of my home. It, I started taking soaps and tie-dye T-shirts and homemade breads and artisan pizza crusts to farmer's markets, wow. and I started making my income that way, and it just kept growing and growing, and eventually bread was pushed out of the way. Tie-dyes were pushed out of the way, although those things were super fun. Mm -hmm. Soap and body personal care products took precedence. That's where the income was, and... I didn't plan to open a store. I, it just happened naturally. Yeah. Um, real quick, I'm going to backtrack just a minute here. Did Did you say you went to college? I did not, go, did to not go to college. Okay. I well, there you go. That was my question. I was going to ask where you went to. Ooh. So moving into the soap business, you said you started out with bread, soap, tie-dye, all that kind of stuff. What about soap? Is it just because the market is better for it in this kind of area? So or like smell what about really good? Okay. Yeah. So soap. So the tie-dyes happen before the soap. The breads happen before the soap and the heirloom garden plants. I've always planted a garden and okay. sold produce and flowers. The soap came the second year, actually, because Truman was born. And he, he just stank. Yeah, he had, yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> um, he had, he had s very sensitive skin. Okay. And so I, I had to make, I th couldn't wash him with, like, baby wash. He, he broke out into a terrible rash with his first bath. The doctor says, don't use anything on him. Just clean him with water. He'll probably grow out of this. And But I was terrified. So I, my, my husband, Pat, said, you're just going to have to make your own soap. And I was like, you can't make soap. You know, I don't know how to do that. And he's like, you're just going to have to learn. So this was before YouTube University. So you kids don't know the days before YouTube University. When you look things up on Google, how to do something oh yeah. you couldn't do that back then so i went guess where i went to the library mm -hmm. and i p checked out you know all the books they had on soap making and i kept them all and i checked them out again you know if somebody was wanting to check out books for soap making for two months they couldn't because i studied every book that <laughs> i could and that's where the soap making started and and to be honest i once i started 
Pat made the first batch because I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> you have to use lye. And I was uh, scared. Yeah. But he made the first batch, and then I'm like, get out of my way. Get I out of my to. kitchen. I'm going to make the soap. And then all the pictures, all of the books came off of the bookshelves, and all this soap started going up yeah. on the shelves to cure because you can't make soap and use it the next day. Mm-hmm. It has it has to cure for 30 days. Oh, wow. wow. So, it, it ha- you know, he's like, what are you going to do with all this soap? You know, I was like, I'm going to sell it at my farmer's market booth this summer. And that's where it all started. That's cool. So you always hear like those stories about where businesses start. So your business started because your son couldn't use regular soap. That's right. So you were making soap for your son, but then you're like, hey, this could be something. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It was so great for us. And once you start doing the research back then, They call it a crunchy mom now. I guess that's the term for a mom that likes essential oils and all natural things. (laughs) And I I started doing research on chemicals, which I had never done before. And that's where I I started, you know, realizing that other people were also searching for that. Obviously, I wasn't the only one. There were others like me. And that's just where it took off. That's cool. Yeah, that would have been really nice. My little brother, uh, he actually had really sensitive skin too. It would have been nice to know like you had <laughs> that. Like we had to, we searched forever and ever to try and find something that worked for his skin. Like, that's really cool that you're able to take something like that and help out other people. Yeah, it, it's soap making is my true passion. I I didn't know that before, but for previous to soap making, before I was Mama Pearson, I was a bookkeeper, an accountant, did books for businesses, did payroll, and little did I know the 15 years that I spent doing that would would benefit me now in my own business. So I say that God works in a mysterious way sometimes, and that's the truth. No, that's really cool. So a time frame here from when you started making soap for the first time to help Truman, fast forward to now, or when you opened the business down here in Gas City, What's the time frame on that? Okay, so Truman was born in 2009. So that winter was when I took the little, I'm making soap and filling the bookshelves. And then 2010 is when I started selling soap. We lived in Warsaw. Okay. So in that time frame, in 2012, Lennon was born in 2011. We moved back here. So for a year, I sold soap in Warsaw. And that was back in a time of, the economy was really weird, 2008, 2009. If you heard of the housing market crash oh yeah. and the gas prices were $5 a gallon. So it was a scary time to move back to Grant County from Warsaw. Warsaw is a different kind of community. They have Biomet and lots of factories that build medical mm-hmm. stuff. And so it was a scary time. The economy was weird, but I didn't want to give up soap making. So we moved back here in 2011. So 2012... Then I started selling at a farmer's market. It wasn't really a farmer's market. It was an o- like an open-air market. I started Mar- Marion Open-Air Market. We used to be out in front of Tree of Life bookstores. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you remember that. So I sold there for many years. But 2013 was the time that I opened my first brick and mortar. Okay, And is that the one that's still up today? No. <coughs> I, um, I was on First Street, actually. Behind, th- it was in the flower shop. My mother-in-law owned the flower shop, oh. Bloons Flowers and Gifts, on the corner of First and Main, and they had this little office that used to be my father-in-law's Jones Concrete office, and he let us open a shop there. The little, what is it now, the Blooms and Yes, Tunes it or is. Whatever that's but it was a little 16 by 16 room, and I I hauled all the kids there. Truman <laughs> was in preschool. Lennon was in diapers. He wasn't even two yet. Wow. So this, they've grown up in the soap business. Quentin was, he was in preschool when we started, when we moved back here. Now, with all of that experience, uh, what what would you say to someone who's younger, starting out, looking to start their own business? What advice would you give them? The the advice that I give someone to, that is choosing to be an entrepreneur, uh, to go out on their own, some of the qualities or the traits that you must absolutely possess are you can't be afraid to fail you have to be able willing to take risk you have to be the the most important ingredient is determination you have to i want it i want to do this 
I, I don't hear the word no, I, I want to do this, and you have to believe in yourself. The, the single most investment that you'll make in your business at any given time, especially when you're starting up, is your time. Yeah. You have to be willing to put as much time. You can't go into it thinking, I'm going to make $25 an hour. That's my plan. And you have to, s you can't even think about that. You can't think about the money. You just have to say, you want to do this for people. I wanted to make soap for people. Yeah. I loved my soap. I wanted to share it with them. I thought it was great. And I wanted everyone to yeah. know about it and have this great soap too. I just, I wanted that. And I just, I wanted to nurture people and take care of people. Depending on the type of business that you're in, most entrepreneurs, they do want to nurture someone in some way or fashion. Mm -hmm. And, but you just have to, you have to really want to do something and giving up can't be in your repertoire. You can't, you can't want to give up. It's not an option. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I guess if you don't <coughs> reach success and at the five year mark, you might have to regroup and, and maybe take a different path yeah. and you might have to realize that it's not for you if it's not working out. But if it is, you know, you're probably meant to do it. Yeah. Well, I personally love your soap. Oh I've been thanks. there multiple times. Have you guys been to Soporium? Yeah, uh, I have hey, not. Peyton, you know, I know you live well, in. Wabash. I don't have to come. I, I do have to come. You I live in Wabash, though, so yeah. it's a little bit more. You didn't see the world's largest bath bomb? I did not. Oh man. Yeah. So real quick side story, like this doesn't have to be a long conversation, but who did the mural on the side of your building? Because okay. that is truly awesome. Thank you. That was a dream of mine when we bought that building. We wanted to put a mural on, and it just worked out again. God's path for you know helping realize some of your dreams i believe but it was taylor university art okay. graduate students we partnered with taylor they had a grant the professors did and it just worked out we bought all the materials and safety equipment and they provided the labor oh that's wow. really cool i knew it was college kids but i thought it was iwu because i'm a little biased towards iwu but he yeah he was hoping you went to iwu i did go to iwu nice. so no but i remember when i was driving because i was working at mike anderson chevrolet at the time I would drive back and forth and see them up on the ladders painting and stuff. So it's it looks really good. So thanks. It was so hot that week. It was <laughs> and <laughs> sure the sun was. just beat down on that west wall, and they did the whole mural with little brushes, little one inch brushes. Wow. The yeah, whole I thing. remember that. It took them a while to do it, but that's crazy. It looks really good. Yeah. So. so I love it. You had mentioned that uh, you were a stay at home mom. So what was it like, like running the business while also being you know full time mom? Oh, that's that's probably some of the hardest years of my business. Most challenging. I have some really hilarious pictures of Lennon, my youngest. He loves chocolate milk and the things that he oh would get else. into when I was busy cutting soap. <laughs> he wanted chocolate milk just a minute. And, you know, he had oh. chocolate milk spread all o the Hershey syrup. He got it out himself, spread it all over the couch. But that was challenging because. In the beginning, I was packing up all of my product and mm -hmm. taking it to markets and setting up an awning, like a canopy, yeah. the tables. Uh, and my husband, he did not work with me at the time. He worked outside of the home. And I had to take all the children with me and, and make them mind. And, you know, and mm -hmm. they're boys. And they yeah. like, they, they're they mischievous, you know. And so we all know Quentin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He was very, there's some great stories about Quentin <laughs> in oh, the market. We can talk <laughs> off camera yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, um, it, was, it was fun, though. Yeah. Memorable times. Yeah, but it's a lot easier now. You don't have to move anything, right? You don't have to transport as much. I'm so no. Do you do, like, any deliveries or anything nowadays uh, we still? Ha or? We have a website, so okay. anything, everything's shipping out. There's still a couple of shows that we do, um, but we don't really go out anymore. We conduct our own markets at yeah. our business mm -hmm. which uh, there's 70 vendors i don't know if you've ever seen oh those. Yeah. That fall i was festival, just i was I just gonna ask you about festival. that yeah i was just gonna ask you about that so where did that start because well, i didn't know about it until i was working at mike anderson and I, one day i look over there and it's like so many people over there and now it's it's huge again, so where did that start i have to give that to god as well because he started me on the path of building my business in the markets in the farmers mm -hmm. market in Warsaw that's my first market that I ever did and just my entrepreneur mind all the things that I can make to sell and and then when we moved back here there wasn't a market so I started one Marion yeah. open-air market and I loved doing that and I did that till 2017 when my business started to get 
so big or not huge. It's not a huge business. It's still busy. It kept me busy enough that I could not manage the market yeah. anymore. And mm. all there's a lot that goes into managing a weekly market and yeah. vendors. And there's just so much to, that goes into that. So I stopped doing the market, but I still loved it so much. And I love small businesses myself. I'm a great supporter of small business. I love what small business brings to your community. You need your pants hemmed. There's probably a seamstress at the market, you know, or there's you can find somebody to tie dye custom shirts for mm -hmm. you. I just love that. So we decided to have when we bought that building, we decided to have two markets a year. And that's enough for me to get uh, the support for small businesses yeah. and introducing that to our community and connecting our community with those small businesses mm -hmm. without overwhelming me of running yeah. a weekly market. Oh yeah. mm -hmm. And I know for me being there at the market, because we go every year, but I don't even, I've never heard of 80% of the people that are there, which is really cool. Because like you said, you're connecting the people to these other people that are trying to start their own businesses and you never even know about them until I said with something like that. So, so when are the, when's the next one coming up? May 18th is Mama's Spring Market. May 18th, Spring mark it down fall. boys. Yeah. Hey, Mark it down. My mom always takes us. <laughs> I got, uh, I remember the world's largest bath bomb. I didn't wear any swimming clothes to that. I got in that <laughs> pool in some khaki cargo shorts and a yellow polo. <laughs> and it, they were weighing me down like a ton. <laughs> how how heavy on. was it? It was 198.6 pounds. And the Guinness, when I applied, because you have to apply yeah. for a pre-approved, they told me it had to weigh 45 pounds. So we... We you did it. You shattered you, it. I yeah. mean, yeah, you, you barely got the record. Like, uh, yeah. We yeah. still have, have it. We still have the official Guinness record. You do you guys have that, like, yep. plaqued no. up somewhere? Yeah, we do. We have the the record is in our shop. And there's a bunch of pictures. Of course, That's the cool. bath bomb, part of the proof, we had to prove that it that it Works. worked. So we had. There's a lot of things yeah. we had to do, like 30 pages of requirements. But that's probably the, the most fun and most memorable, that is my shining moment, I think. And I, I did it because my the kids were little then. They were littler. It was 20, 2018. Yeah. So, you know, Zaire, you were a little guy. I was, but I don't even know if I was in middle well, school. So that was six years ago. You would have been like in seventh grade. We had to put the pool up. We had to prove that it worked. So it was, it was, um, it was a great day. And my kids, I wanted to prove to them that you want to set a world record? So Dude Perfect was really popular yeah. back then. My kids mm -hmm. were so Still into Dude are. Perfect. I watch every video. I invited Dude Perfect to come, t but oh they hey. didn't show up. <laughs> you that know, I really wanted them to awesome. come. So cool. I sent them a few messages, but I, I thought Did that they ever really respond? Or? No, they oh. didn't. But um, That would have been... Shout out yeah. Dude Perfect for yeah. not being cool. Yeah. So next time, Dude Perfect, we'll go 200 pounds next time. A lot of yeah, a lot of people did show up that day, and it was it was great. It was a great day, and I proved to my kids, which was important to me, that if you think you want to set a world record, find Ooh. out what it takes, and let's find out what you're good at. What can you do? Mm -hmm. Let's find out what you're good at, and let's pursue it, and yeah. let's follow it to the end, and follow through. And I have a world record now, which wow. I like it. It's impressive. Right, I got one more question about the shop before we kind of get into like the community feel of everything. Okay. So you don't sell just soap now anymore. Right. You do a lot of, because I've gotten some beard oil and some beard stuff from there as well. So why? when you're, why? Do you say why? That's, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> it doesn't look tame right now, guys, but. I used to. Um, so when you're looking into like like a new product or something, what kind of goes into that? Do you do like some market testing or like what kind of – first of all, what do you sell other than soap? And then kind of explain what I just asked, I guess. Oh, <laughs> we sell just all kinds of personal care products from deodorants to beard care, full beard care products. My husband makes shaving soap, mug and brush, uh, we sell essential oil roller balls, lip balm, bath bombs, bubble bath, lotion. It's all, I every product was added because customers would ask, can you do this? I'd really like some lotion, you know, or that's, it just came about naturally. Um, we do market research, so I'm getting ready to do, uh, usually it takes me a year from start to finish on 
a new product development. So I do different formulas. Everything that I make is formulated by me. Mm -hmm. So I am the master formulator of all the soap formulas, and that, that that's that's a big deal. Formulating your soap, you can't just yeah. throw some stuff in a pot and make it happen. We do shampoo. That's another great product that we have. But everything's formulated by me, tested by us, friends, family, before it's even released. We do all of our own packaging and product design, graphic design on all the labels. Everything's done by us in-house. But I'm getting ready to do a, uh, somebody came to me and he's a swimmer and he, he swims every day, but the chlorine really bothers his skin. Mm. So that th so that started me on a path to create something that I'm calling sea spray because vitamin C is neutralizes the chlorine on the skin. Oh. So just that's kind of how oh it happens. Cool. Somebody asked me, they have this problem, and I'm like, I want to help you remedy. I want to help you find something in a natural way that's going to help you. And yeah, so no, I'll cool. somebody that asked me, I'll give him, you know, here's here's this. I want you to try it. Give me feedback. What does it need? Yeah. Is it missing some, or does it work great? And we kind of go from there. That's, that's cool. kind of how it happens. Sorry, I lied. I have one more question. Yeah. <laughs> so with the brick and mortar, how many employees do you currently employ? Well, my husband and I, and then we have three other employees. Okay. And usually we employ high school students. That's what I was thinking. They don't have to go to Mississinawal, but all of them always have gone to Mississinawal. Usually we start uh, at 15, um, sophomore year, and they're usually with us till their senior year. Oh, cool. There, we're getting ready to lose two seniors this year. So there you go, guys. So Your yeah, sophomore higher. Right now we have Jersey Scott, um, Ivy Neal. They're gonna my seniors. So I'm gonna be devastated to see them go. And Carson Miracle works for us oh. too. So, but he's just a sophomore. So hopefully yeah. he'll stick around for a little yeah. longer. So uh, with being in the community and being a business owner, what kind of uh, defines success for you? Like at the end of a maybe you didn't sell so much or you know it didn't go the way you wanted it to what still can you look back on and just like that check in the box that you I did what I wanted to today and I can you know be at peace that is a good question there were days in the beginning where I didn't have a single customer and those days were were kind of sad for me oh you know am I doing the right thing that's goes back to where I said the important ingredient for being an entrepreneur you have to be able to brush that off and face mm -hmm. the next day just like it was a brand new day and don't let that stuff drag you down my husband was good about lifting me up but you know I don't have those days very often anymore because you build your business up it would be like Mike Anderson not having yeah. a single customer that's never going to happen to them so I'm not saying it never will happen but usually I at least have one customer yeah. now it won't go the whole day but when when days are hard still the past few years navigating 2020 through 2024 it's it's been a roller coaster ride in a small business i mean everybody uh, you know your teacher here will he's probably raising a family and trying to do this on the same income or whatever it's challenging when hamburger is six dollars a pound at the store you know you guys probably don't have to worry about that right now your parents do but there's different things that a small business owner, you have to be able to reinvent yourself and approach marketing in a different way. I had to do that for sure yeah. last year in 2023 after the year 22 came around. It was a, a just an awakening these last four years, well three I years. Think I think one of the big thing is I'm not a business owner, but I worked for a business like that. W 2020 is one thing, right? When everything shut down and everyone thinks that was the worst of it. But what people don't realize is that businesses are still coming out of that because not only are you guys struggling like with your product or whatever, like prices are going up on everything. So like how for you, have you noticed the community kind of rally around you guys as a business when you may have had to increase prices or you haven't had as much stock or whatever it may be. What, uh, what have you kind of noticed from the community? We, we appreciate and we realize all the loyalty that we have been shown. That is, that is very important. It's small communities, small towns support like no other. I, if I were, I mean, 
if I were in a bigger city, I don't think I would still be here today. And I drive through Anderson for a, for a track meet at one point, and Texas Roadhouse is closed. Um, yeah. There's another big restaurant that's closed. And, you know, those things are kind of s- daunting and scary. So, and you're right, 2020 wasn't the worst of it. Uh, and then 2021 came along, and there was all kinds of stimulus money. And then 2022 came around, and there was still, there was that, there we, we were dropping. Mm-hmm. The stimulus money stopped, and then the prices were high. Yep. You know, and not everybody went back to work. Nope. So it's it's just been a, it's been an incredibly challenging and learning experience. But I, again, just learning, uh, any opportunity to learn something new just keeps things new and keeps you going. You, I don't get stuck in a rut, so... I try not to get, like, things aren't going to be like they were in 2019. You know? Sorry, guys. We got an interruption, interruption yeah. here. But we're good. We can go right through it. Okay. We're in school. Yeah, we're in school. We're it here happens. to learn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, you've, you've come through a lot of things. Like, obviously, starting your own business. You've, you've got through COVID. You've made it through all these things. Um, like, who was your role model? And it might not have been the same person through all that. But, like, who's been, like, the one person that's been, like, hey, I need, like, I look up to you. Like, what's what's that been like? Well, uh, m- my dad was a big sounding board for me. Um, he 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 always believed in me and supported me. I mean, your parents are are great for that. Uh, but my husband's mother, she was a business owner before I was. Mm-hmm. For twenty years, she owned the Bloons Flowers and Gifts on the corner there. I look up to her, and I, I'm always searching for advice from her. If I'm doubting something or I have to answer a question, or need a question answered, I go to her. So I would say she's a big role model for me and has been for all the years that we've been in business. And yeah. she's she's helped us tremendously from when the kids were little, watching the kids or helping with the kids, her and her husband, Bruce. And just that's that's – so it's family. I guess that would be my – my one thing, there's really not a role model that I have mm-hmm. business icon-wise. That's um, okay. It probably somebody in the soap industry, and yeah. her name's Kathy McGinnis. Uh, you know, I go to I soap con. Yeah. So th- I, <laughs> you know, if you comic con or whatever, I go to soap con. Soap con? So, yeah. Wow. And, and when I'm is that? Her, it's, it's a soap convention. I for win. Win? I, w- I want to go. Yeah. It well, actually, I was a st- I was one of the speakers wow. last year. It's it's in October and it's in Moorhead, Kentucky. I bet it smells good. Yeah, it does. I they bet make it does. soap. That'd be <laughs> pretty ironic if it didn't smell good. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of soap makers, cosmetic formulators. I've met like the world-renowned Kevin Dunn, uh, who's written many books. He's a he's a such a smart chemist, and I've learned so many things about formulating and going to SoapCon over the years. The first one was in 2016. And I've only missed a couple, mm. so we go every year. Yeah, if you oh learn yeah, a lot networking with people in your business mm-hmm. and like-minded people, and y- I, I taught my uh, my little s- seminar was about marketing and how to oh have cool. a big artisan market on your property. So I taught people how to do things like Mama's Fall Fest. Yeah, I bet you walk in those doors and they're just <laughs> <laughs> they're beautiful. I bet it. Man, every time I walk past one of Pearson's, I catch a whiff. Yeah, I it's drive, great. Drive down, drive down Main Street, you'll smell. Yeah, you go My from Mama Pearson's, then it's like cheeseburgers at the poorhouse. Yeah, house. right. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, my my mother-in-law could not walk into your store though. She has an autoimmune disease, and the smells would just set her off. But anyway, they always do good by by me and my asthma. I always just really strong, uh, like uh, scented stuff. Like I can't even really wear cologne, but like the rub on cologne, I, I never really have any too many issues with, and so that's always just been like, it's a rare it's a rare sight for me to smell something that's not like a candle and my chest not get tight, so that's yeah. always something I appreciate going in there. Yeah. Well, we make it a point to use. I don't use any paraben or phthalate fragrances. We use okay. natural alternative fragrances, uh, a lot of essential oils. So I think that has a lot to do with it. A lot of so people tell me the same thing. Mom. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, if someone was looking up to you and they and they really want to get into like being a business owner and they want to be an entrepreneur, what things, like what hobbies, what extracurriculars do you think they should get into now, either to build the character 
traits or just the things they should do now to make them ready and more capable? I think it's important to probably take a business class if it's offered in high school. Uh, anything to do with marketing, because guess who's going to be your number one marketer? That you're not going to have anything enough money to afford to pay anyone to do marketing for you. So you need to be able to learn those types of things when it's free mm -hmm. in high school. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to get some financial classes in there, accounting, something like that, wha when it's free. If you're thinking about doing these types of things, um, take as many free classes as you can, um, for sure. All right. So we're just about out of time. We're going to do what we're going to do after every podcast, some rapid fire questions. Okay. I did not include these in the email. Okay. <laughs> so just these are first fun. First thing that comes up to the top of your head, we'll ask a couple of questions. So I'm going to start with what we always talk about. What is your favorite breakfast food item? Bacon. It's oh, a good one. Perfect. Now, what's your favorite drink? Coffee. Coffee? Okay. F okay. Or like, Diet Pepsi. Are you thinking like follow up to the coffee question? Starbucks, Lola's, Abby? Like, what Ooh. are you thinking? Starbucks, Midwest. but I I don't I usually make it at home. Oh, I okay. just drink it black too. I have a ninja, uh, a ninja. My husband has a Breville espresso, wow. but I don't do you all that fancy, fancy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your favorite animal? Dog. Dog. Man. What's your favorite Mama Pearson scent? Soaptopia. Soaptopia. And I like pink Himalayan salt, which is lemongrass and eucalyptus. Oh my gosh, that one is so good. It's so good. It's my go-to. I make hundreds <laughs> of soaps, two two scents that I take home, Soaptopia and Pink Himalayan Salt, and that's it. And I was out of soap today, and I didn't have any at my house except for a bar of eucalyptus. So I did it's open kind of a bar of eucalyptus, and it's not bad, but I'm going to bring home my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your favorite Mama Pearson's product? Then? Soap in the shampoo bar. <laughs> well, I love liquid gold. I use a squalane facial oil. Those are those are my tops. And a uh, final question for you. Marion or Mrs. Senawa? Mrs. Senawa. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, that, that does it for us today on uh, the Tribecast. Mama Pearson, Amy, thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having so me. We it was appreciate great. it greatly. And check this one out. We are now on Spotify Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. So check us out wherever you listen to your podcasts. And don't miss, we will take a week off because we have spring break coming up. But coming right Ooh. up right after spring break. Mayor Rock will be in Ooh, the be hot good. seat. And Mayor Rock good. will be here. So check that one out. And thanks again, Amy. And thanks. we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. See you.